Okay, so the top of the Springdale right here, but if you look, there's this carbonate bed. Uh huh. We, we actually refer to this as Sarah's fish bed. Oh, and I know her. This, this, uh, the Sarah's fish site is actually a little further over to the east, but uh, there's lots of bone in this stuff. It's a limestone. And that's in the you base of the Canta? This is right on top of the of the Springdale sandstone. Sweet. Very close to the very top of the Springdale sandstone. And there's often tracks on these surfaces. And are these stromatolytic? No. No, they're just straight Not up here. So they're just no. straight up carbonate. So they would have been formed by some kind of a there's bone. Uh yeah. <laughs> that's like a chunk of a vert, yeah? Indeed, yeah. That looks like a weather. That'll ride right, it right around here, probably. Okay, so just to continue our narrative real quick, base of the Kayanta, we got this this limey bed with fish. We get to this carbonate, and these carbonates would have been formed by like a playa drying out, right? Yes. So we've got a dry section. Then we got this little forest, and then moving up section into the red, we got Rob's jack site with a little crocodile morph. Yeah. Then we go up further and it looks like there's some type of a channel sandstone and up there. You get, yeah, you get these big flat carbonate surfaces. Those are carbonate probably, surfaces, okay. Uh, probably playas. Playas, okay. And then you get track surfaces. A track lot surfaces. Tra tracks and invertebrate burrows. Okay. And then you can see where it starts getting more fluvial. Pinkish bands starting to appear. And that's like equivalent to our plant site, I roughly? I think that's probably roughly equivalent to where the plants are coming oh, from the, and all those little teeth and stuff like that on the other side, on the north side of Sand Mountain. So we could have the like track remember, site, remember, the fish, transitioning to the forest, Rob's Jack Croc, yeah. maybe a Dilophosaurus you know, somewhere in there, fluvial stuff. transitioning to sand dunes, Way up the Sarasaurus in the sand, maybe. Becoming extremely wide. Full of gypsum. Okay, so what I've got going on here is a new layout sketch of the Kayanta Formation timeline. Because each one of these little scenes along the timeline is based on a different level in the stratigraphy of the Kayanta Formation around the St. George area, um, it was uh, Jim Kirkland suggesting, or actually Jim and Andrew and I all talk about the idea of having the strata from each one of these scenes continue under the next one. But when I was doing my original layout sketch, I was just having a hard time uh, getting that to work and getting the perspective and everything to look right. So what I did was I created this diorama. I basically cut out pieces of cardboard and used masking tape and stuck together this little sort of terraced landscape. And then I took this out to the beach and photographed it. And that's giving me accurate lighting and perspective reference. So now, in the new version of the kind of the timeline, everything kind of steps up as a little level as you go along. So that when you get to the very end of the timeline here, you can actually see all of the underlying strata under the final scene, which is the scene based on a site called the Red Hills Parkway. Here at the very top of the Kayanta Formation, and then in the background we've got the Navajo sandstone sand dunes encroaching. Now, this landscape, again, is kind of a composite. This stratigraphic column probably spanned several million years as you move up section. Um, you know, the real difference in the landscape happens as you move to the right. Things get more arid, and you get the Navajo sandstone, these massive sand dune deposits encroaching. So this is meant to show kind of a plausible general Kayanta landscape, but also a change across the landscape as prevailing weather conditions and climate completely altered the environment and took it from a more forested, uh, lush environment to a more semi-arid to an arid environment.